So these tear gas canisters are from, um, well, I collected them in Egypt. They're not originally from Egypt. They're originally from either the US uh, or possibly the UK. Some tear gas canisters that I found were from the UK. And I picked them up <coughs> on the streets in Egypt during the revolution. Um, I was based in Egypt from 2011 until 2014, one year after the coup. And I collected them in Tahrir Square during um, one of the many um, protests that were part of the uprising. The TGS canisters were fired at the large crowds uh, of people who were demanding the end of repression, the end of corruption, democratization, social justice, freedom. And they are fired en masse by police, by soldiers, <clears throat> from a distance, sometimes up close. Um, they would come soaring through the skies, um, descend into the middle and so often they would, even if there might be clashes, some uh, fighting between protesters and police, but the tear gas would be fired way over and it would often actually end up in areas where, um, where people were resting and were trying to find some kind of respite from the clashes, including in the field hospitals. So there were street clinics set up by protesters <coughs> to kind of take care of people who'd been injured. And um, pretty much every time I visited one of those, a tear gas canister would come flying in from the distance. The, um, I think that, I mean, they look quite innocuous, and they're not very large. They, they're also light now, given that, given that they're used, given they're empty. They, they still smell a bit, but not as much as they do, but it's hard from those to realize actually what the full impact of them is on your body, especially when you're in quite a tight environment, um, let's say an alleyway with lots of people around you, and suddenly you can't breathe suddenly your eyes are burning, suddenly you feel like you're falling over. And I saw many times people walking down the street and sometimes it wouldn't even, the tear gas would no longer be overwhelming, but people would still choke and collapse and we'd have to run them to hospital. In one particular um, set of protests around Mohammed Mahmoud Street, which is a street just off Tahrir Square, in November 2011, <coughs> protests were for five, six days, and over 20 people, possibly more than 30 people died died because of the tear gas. So the tear gas was killing people. It didn't just incapacitate you. It led, like, people lost their lives because of being overwhelmed by tear gas. Now, those, those clashes there, they were between people demanding freedom and Egyptian police. And the tear gas was sent to them from other places, but we also need to understand, well, how did the Egyptian regime pay for that tear gas? And what are the corporate influences that enabled them to drive that repression? Well, who are the corporations that were actually standing side by side with Mubarak for 10, 20 years before the revolution and since have sided with the repression and particularly with the army to avoid democracy? And when you look who the largest foreign investor is in Egypt, well, BP is very proud to proclaim that they are on their website. And they, they also were very proud until um, January 2011 to um, boast about their very close relationships with the Mubarak regime. Since the, um, the revolution, they, they also they tried to make very good and did work closely with the Muslim Brotherhood. And then more recently have um, established once again very tight connections to the military regime, which is in control. BP was very clear that those are their allies, they are the people they will support, that is where their money is going. That's who they are propping up. And when you when you are propping up a dictator, as Sisi is in Egypt, then that means that you are providing the means, the financial means, ultimately, for him to purchase weapons, including tear gas, which are used against a civilian population, including when they rise up and demand freedom. And sometimes that's in rising up in Tahrir Square. Sometimes, um, as in Idku and, um, and Bugmarezu, towns on the north coast of Egypt, people are rising up because they're angry with BP, quite specifically. I've visited places and villages where people are saying, we do not want BP to build a gas plant here. They protested, they marched, they occupied the sites, and particularly in Bugmarezu, they then faced police repression, people were beaten, and tear gas was fired. These canisters tell a story. They tell a story of how people tried to take back freedom, tried to take back control from a police state. And they also tell a story about how BP sided with that police state to crush the push for freedom.